If you have a YouTube channel, then it's very likely that one morning you will wake up to an email like this. Our team has reviewed your content and unfortunately we think it violates the harmful and dangerous policy. We removed the following content from YouTube. I know what you're going to tell me. Well, Skylar, that will never happen to me because I do follow the terms and conditions of YouTube Partner Program and I would never break the rules. Well, guess what? I did too. I followed all the rules and this still happened to me. So what happened? Let's go from the beginning. On August 7, but uh, then let's see over here. I have my phone just so I can relate word by word. At 10.39 p.m. I was going to bed reading some emails and I noticed this email from YouTube. And it says just that, that my you know content got removed for harmful and dangerous policy. Now, my first reaction was, of course, burst into laugh. My content being harmful and dangerous? I mean, we added hummingbird photos and, you know, just this is a photography channel. There is nothing dangerous or harmful about it. So, I, you know, the email goes a little long and then at the bottom of the email, you know, I'm reading through it. And at the bottom of it, it says, review your content with our policies in mind. If after reviewing your content, you think we made a mistake, let us know. You can appeal the decision here. So there is a link where you can just click on it to appeal the decision. So of course, that's what I did. Immediately, I clicked on the link and I didn't know how to appeal a you know, warning like this. So I just said something along the lines of, um, I don't know what happened. Uh, my content got tagged as dangerous and harmful. Uh, this is definitely not the case. Can please take a look at it? And you know, just on, on and on and on trying to explain the situation. Well, when I went to send the, the email, it tells me that it has too many characters. So it turns out you can only put about five rows on your phone and then you run out of characters. So I deleted the whole bottom part of the email, just left the beginning where it says, I don't know what happened. If somebody can please look at the situation, obviously it was a mistake. So I sent it. Now, as soon as I send the email, you know how, you know how when you send an email and you, by mistake, you type in the email address wrong and it just bounces right back? Well, that's kind of what happened. I sent the email and within two minutes, I got an email back from YouTube. This time it said, let me find my YouTube email here. And it says, hi, Skylar Ewing photographer. We reviewed your appeal for the following and it says the name of the video. I will tell you a second which video it was. We reviewed your, we reviewed your content carefully and we have confirmed that it violates our harmful and dangerous policy. We know this is probably disappointing news, but it's our job to make sure that YouTube is a safe place for all. Now, this video that they're talking about, it's the Lumina Neo video where I showed you guys how to add a steam overlay to coffees and teas and so. And it had a link on the description to my Google Drive where I share with you a couple of my images of the steam that I took with my own camera and I have the rights to it. So my appeal got denied. Now it's, you know, it's late, it's 11 p.m. at this point, I'm in bed, I'm thinking, well, you know, I'll get to the bottom of this tomorrow. So the next day I wake up and I, you know, do some Googling, what's happening with these warnings. And also I wanted to see what is this dangerous and harmful policy because... So I'm thinking before I take any kind of further action, I should probably go into YouTube partner program and look to that guideline of, you know, harmful and, da harmful and dangerous policy to see maybe I am breaking it somehow and I just don't know it. So I went to YouTube help and I found the policy and this is what it says. If you're posting content, don't post content on YouTube that fits any of these descriptions noted below. Extremely dangerous challenges. Challenges that poses an imminent risk and physical injuries. That is not this channel, so I'm not worried about that. That cannot be it, right? Dangerous or threatening pranks. We do not do any pranks in here. That cannot be it. Instructions to kill or harm. This channel, it's a photography channel. We do not kill or harm. And then another one is hard drug of use or creation. No drugs on this channel. I am not worried about that. Eating disorders, none of that in here. Violent events, instructional t theft or cheating, hacking. And then the very, very last one is this one. Bypassing payment for digital content or services. Showing viewers how to use apps, websites, 
or other information technology to gain unauthorized access to audio content, audiovisual content, full video games, software, or streaming services that normally requires payment. So a light bulb goes out in my head. I'm like, oh my God, I have that link to my Google Drive. It probably got tagged as because, you know, the, even the title says like free download, but it was free download to the overlays. And I did some more Googling, found out that uh, Steam also is a gaming platform. So it's probably get tagged by, you know, something with the gaming platform and being free download and so on. So this is great news. Now I know exactly what I'm being accused of, so I can go and dispute it better. I, uh, you know, try to do some Googling on how to reach YouTube. I go to the computer. I finally found the help center and like the, you know, Google dot support dot help, something like that. And I am presented with two options. I can chat with somebody and that I was the third one in line. I didn't know how long it will take. And then I could also send an email. Now I was about ready to go take my kids to lunch. So I didn't really wanted to spend the time on waiting. And I figured it's a very simple case. Now I know exactly what I'm being accused on. I can go and dispute it clearly. And you know, obviously you don't need to be a rocket science to see that it was a mistake. So I start writing, writing a email and I explain clearly that, you know, what the situation was and how this was not, you know, teaching people how to gain free access to, you know, things that they should pay for. And I explained it as good as I could and sent the email. After I sent the email to YouTube, I did some more Googling and research. And from what I found, people having this problem, they said, do not send an email, do not appeal. You want to go into the chat and chat with someone because that's the best way to deal with this. You need to have a human be there and look at your account and figure out what's wrong. So I went to the computer and got to the chat and I was ready to, you know, sit down and chat with someone. Well, it turns out that if you have sent an email already and you have a case open, you cannot contact them about the same problem during via chat. So you just have to, you know, wait for your results. It says right there on the chat, you have a case open. You just need to sit down and wait now for the, you know, case to be resolved or not get an answer. So the waiting time started and I'm waiting and I'm waiting. It's nothing I can do at this point. So after many hours passed, now we're talking, let's see, the next day, like almost at 6 p.m., I get an email from YouTube. And this time it says, hi there. Thank you for reaching out to us. I can only imagine how concerned you are about your channel receiving a warning. Let me share information about this. And then it keeps me a lot of copy paste from the, you know, YouTube guideline. And then the very bottom of it, it just says this. I see that you've already appealed the warning and our internal team rejected it after reviewing it. We hope you take time to review our community guideline because the content violates our harmful and dangerous content. We encourage you to review this policy closely. Regards, Rands. Now Rands here didn't even read my email, just basically said, hey, I see that you appealed it and it got rejected, so I don't want to waste my time on this. I'm just going to assume you're guilty because somehow you were found guilty before, so that must be the case. So he took no time on looking up my account. All he said is just copy pasted a whole bunch of stuff from the community guideline and then said that he sees that somebody already looked into it and I must be guilty. So now at least I have an answer to my case and I can probably go back into the chat and speak with a real human and have them actually look at the case, right? So I go to the computer, go to the chat and this time I am very lucky. I am the first one in line and within seconds I'm on a chat with Zed. Let me just make sure I didn't say his name wrong. Yes, his name is Zed. Now Zed, it's not like Rand's. Zed wants to do his job. He wants to get to the bottom of this and wants to help me out. He starts by, you know, tell me all those community guidelines. I'm so sorry this happened to you. Uh, must be terrible. You must have been frustrated. Let me look into the account. What happened? I go into the explaining the whole situation. What happened to that point? Now, 10 minutes into the conversation, Zed is asking me if it's okay, if it takes five minutes to look into the account and then he will get right back to me. At this point, I'm feeling great. Finally, a person 
It's about to look into this problem and solve it once for all. Five minutes later, Zed comes back. He asks if we could please have a few more minutes to look into the situation. No problem. I'm here. I can be here all day. Please do look at the situation. I just want this matter to go away. Now, a few minutes later, he comes back to write this. As I further review the case, it appears that if you already, already have an existing conversation with one of my colleagues, he already shared pertinent information regarding this matter. If you have any other pressing concerns, you might respond to Rand's last email with a reference case number and it shows the case number. So basically, after all that chat, all I got is Zed does not want to touch the problem. He doesn't want to look into the issue because somebody else got assigned my case and, you know, I should probably take it back to them. I am not mad at Zed. Zed did his job and I know that that's the way things work. So I got off the chat disappointed, but now I only had one thing left to do and that is message Rands again. I got into the email and this time I wrote a very long email explaining the situation and begging him basically to do his job and look into this account. I didn't say do your job by the way. I said it in a way nicer way. And now we started the waiting and I waited and waited and this time was not just a few hours, it's been days. I mean, like I said, this whole saga started on August 7 and today it is August 16 and I finally got an email back. Now this time was not Rance to message me, it was Ma Mara. And this is what Mara says. Hey Skylar, Mara here, stepping in for Rance. It's looking good, right? Some other person, maybe they want to do their job and look into this thing. So I keep reading. I understand that the decision of our internal team is not what you were hoping for. However, since you already made an appeal and the team reviewed your content, the decision is already final. It says, kindly take note of the showing viewers how to use apps, websites, or other information technology to gain unauthorized access to audio content, audio visual content, full video game software, or streaming services that normally requires payment, it is not allowed on this platform. I am sorry I don't have better news for you. Let me know if you have other concerns. So basically, Mara didn't look into the situation either. She just replied back saying the same thing everybody's been saying. Hey, your appeal got rejected. They must have a reason for it. And that's pretty much it. It's nothing else you can do. Now, here is the things I've learned from this. The first time you break the rules of YouTube, you get a warning. This is what I got. If this happens again, then you will get a strike. If uh, they consider that it's very dangerous what you're doing, your account could be terminated with just one strike only. If uh, the, you know, strike is not considered that dangerous, then you can get one up to three strikes. When you get three strikes, your account will be terminated. If you get a strike, then you lose the privilege of uploading to YouTube for about a week. And then at the second strike, you cannot upload for two weeks. Now, here is the things that you should learn from my mistakes. If you ever find yourself getting a warning or a strike, do not click that appeal button. Do not do any of that. Wait for the next day, get on a chat and speak with a human being that can look into the account and see what the issue is and fix it for you. I made this, this mistake, I was rushing to appeal it, I didn't think much of it, and now because my appeal was um, declined, nobody will look at the account and it's just considered that I broke the rules, and now I have a big sign that says warning on my account, and I have to be careful not to get any strikes or my account will be terminated. Also, you should know you can only appeal once, so you cannot go and keep appealing a warning or a strike. And I think, I might be wrong on this one, but you, you can look into it. I believe you can only appeal one strike per 60 days. So that's another thing you should consider. So what does that mean for my account? Well, I had to go back and do all my tutorials and all my videos, and I had to take down all the videos where it says free download, all the videos that I give you guys free assets like... Um, free overlays that for you to download and use the Luminar Neo. I had another one with like how to add Sunflare and I gave you a free download for Sunflare that I made in Photoshop. And I took down all of those videos. I think it were about six videos that I've gave you assets. And just because 
a mistake happened once and that doesn't mean it cannot happen again and I do not want to take the risk of getting flagged again and getting a strike. So I took down those videos and I am sorry that if you did not get those free assets now you cannot get them anymore and I'm not sure how I will be able to do that in the future. Now I don't want you to think this video is a rant or a hate video towards YouTube or the people that work for YouTube. This is purely for you to understand how the system works and if you find yourself in the situation that I found myself then here is the thing you should and you should not do to you know better take care of this situation. I hope this was helpful and you learned something today and I hope you never never have to deal with this. But if it does happen, now at least you know how the system works and what you can or cannot do. Thank you so much for watching. My name is Skylar Ewing. I will see you in my next video.